Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel, and glad to see all you guys here again. And today we are going to talk about uh, patterning in AutoCAD. So assume that we are asked to create a layout for a banquet room layout setup, and there are a lot of tables and chairs. So we probably don't want to create each site one by one. So we probably want to create just one site and use patterns, or in AutoCAD, it's called an array to create the rest of our tables and the chairs. So let's get it started. So I'm going to go to a new file here, then I go to solid line white. So first of all, I'm going to create a table and I'm going to uh, draw a circle. So I'm going to do a center radius and the start of zero comma zero. And the radius of the table is going to be 20. And after this, I'm going to create some construction lines. So I'm going to go to the construction line layer and create vertical construction line that passes through zero comma zero and also uh, some horizontal construction lines that passes through zero comma zero. I'm going to uh, offsite then do through, make this construction line here. Then I'm going to create a chair then I'm going to use construction line again. Then I'm going to offsite this construction line 10 units down. So offsite, this turns is 10, this construction line 10 units down. Then I'm going to make a chair. So I'm going to switch back to the solid line white layer, then make a rectangle with the dimension 20 by 18, 20 comma 18, then enter. Now I'm going to grab the center point of the rectangle and place it on this point here. So I'm going to check the make point option. Then I'm going to click on move, says select the objects. I'm going to select the rectangle. Then after you are done, right click of the mouse. This says pick the base point. Then I'm going to pick the center point here and move the chair right here. Then I'm going to create the array for the chairs. So in AutoCAD, we have polar array, which means the objects are going to be around the part. Or we have rectangular array, which are like rectangles. Or we could have path array, which the part follows through a path line. So since we are going to create the chairs, that are around the table. So we are going to use polar array. So click on polar array, select the objects, which is going to be the chair, then click on the chair, then right click of the mouse after you are done. Then says specify the center point. So we want the chairs to be around the table. So the center point is going to be the center of the table. Then click on the point. Wow, we automatically got six chairs around the table. So let's see if we only need a five. So we could change the number of items to five then press enter. And we could also change the distance in between. So it's 72, let's see, we only need a 60. Then tap in 60, then enter. Then we left a spot open here. Or we could say, now we need the angle to be 360. Then tap in 360, enter. Then we have all the chairs where we could have more chairs afterwards. If you click on the rows here, so if you change it to three, then enter, then you're going to have three chairs after the chair that you created. And I'm going to just make it to be one, then enter. And the levels such as your houses, it has the first floor, second floor. This is AutoCAD, it's a 2D software. So most likely we're not going to use it. So let's just leave it as one. Then the other button is called associative. So associative means if you have this function, associative checked, which means all the chairs that you created are going to be 
an entire entity, which means when you added one, all of them are going to be added together. However, if you have associated but not checked, then after you create the array, then all the chairs are going to be independent entity, which means you can modify each individual chair specifically. So the key point is when you create the array, you have to make the decision, either you have associative checked or not at once, because after you close the array, you will not be able to come back and edit the associative functions anymore. So you have to make it right at the beginning. Okay, so as the first example, maybe in the future, I want to be able to edit all the chairs back as an individual. So I'm not going to have associative checked. So have associative function unchecked. Then let's close the array. So once you close, then you will not be able to come back and edit associative anymore. So have it unchecked. Then close array. Then you can save your work. Okay, so if you hover your mouse on the array, so each chair, they are an individual entity, and you can modify each individual chair independently. All right, so let's create another array. So all the chairs, they are dependent. Okay, so let's copy and paste the table and the chair here. So select both and press Control C, then Control V, paste it somewhere around here. So leave some spaces in between. Before I do that, I'm going to uncheck the snap function. Otherwise, it always snapped some points. So I'm going to turn the snap function off, then paste it somewhere around here, then have the snap function on. Then I'm going to move the table back on the construction line. So click on move. So select the object, select both objects, then right click of the mouse after you are done. Now I'm trying to grab the center point of the table and click on it and place the table back on the construction line. Okay, so now let's try creating the array by having the associative function checked. So let's do array, still polar array, the object is this chair, the right click of the mouse after you're done, then specify the center point, still the center of the table. Then we have a six tables. Then let's still make it to be five, then enter. Then this time we are going to have associative function checked. Then let's close the array. And now when you hover your mouse on those chairs, then they are an entire entity. So let's see if you made a mistake, then you can double click on those chairs and you should be able to edit the array again, then close the array. Then let's see if I want to modify the individual chair here, then you probably want to create them uh, with associative not checked. So let's do it one more time. So copy and paste it here by not checking the snap function, then put it here, then have the snap back on, then move, select objects, then right click of the mouse, then snap the center, place it here, then polar array, the object is the chair, right click of the mouse, then snap to the center of the table, then now let's have associated not checked, the closed array. So let's say I always want to have one spot open instead of have all the chairs. Then I'm going to click on one of the chairs and hit the delete key. Or if you want to tell the banquet people to put all the chairs right underneath of the table, which means the chairs, they are tangent with the table. Then you probably want to create the array with associated check them. So let's try it one more time. So copy and paste, control C and control V. So not having snap checked, put it here, then snap, then move, 
right click of the mouse after you're done, then grab the center, then place it here. So create the array, then right click of the mouse after you're done, then specify the center point, and we're going to have the associated check. Let's change the number of atoms to five. Then enter. Then have the associated check. Then close the array. Then we should be able to edit the chairs because we had the associated check. So let's click on the array. So if you want to place the chairs that is tangent to the table, then you probably need to do some math. It turns out to be the distance is going to be 29. So let's tap in 29 as the distance. So 29, then enter and hit ESE. So all the chairs, they are right around the table. Okay, so let's save the work. So we just talked about how to create polar arrays. So let's see, we have multiple sites of tables and the chairs, and we are going to place them uh, like this. Then we will need to use rectangular array. Then let's come back here. So we are going to create a rectangular array for the site here. Then let's go to rectangular array, then select the objects, select all of those, then right click of the mouse. Whoops, it went up. So let's see if we want all the tables and the chairs to come down. Then the way we can do is we change the distance to a negative number. So let's see, 130 is too compact. Let's tap in negative 150. So we have more spaces in between. Then hit enter. So all the tables and the chairs went down. Then let's have the associated check that. Then next one. So we probably want to have the space wider in the X direction as well. So let's change the space in between to be 180, or you could change the total numbers instead of uh, the distance in between. So let's see, we make it to be negative 400. So we have more spaces. And let's see, we only need a three by three. So we could change the number of columns to three then have the associated checked, then close array. Then save the work. So by doing this, all these tables and the cheers, they are an entire entity. So let's see if I want to delete the middle one here, then it won't be possible unless you explode the part. All right, so let's create another banquet room set up by having some uh, spot open in the middle for a keynote speaker. So I'm going to uh, copy this part here. So let's do copy, control C and the control V, uncheck the snap function, put it here, then snap, then move, select everything, and grab it on the construction line. All right, so let's create another array, which is a rectangular array. So select the objects, then right click of the mouse after you're done. Then let's see this time uh, we need a six by six. So six, enter, the row six is enter. And the distance in between, let's see it's 160. And 170 here, then if we want the tables to come downward, so we are going to put a negative sign in front, then they move downward here. Then we are going to remove the four sets of tables and the chairs in the middle. So we are going to have associated not checked. So not checked here, then close the array. Then when you hover your mouse on the array, you should be able to delete the four sites in the middle, then hit the delete key. Then we are going to put a note that says keynote speaker there. Then let's go to text, then go to a uh, multi-line text, then put it here and tap in keynote speaker, then click on somewhere, Oops, it's disappeared, but actually it's not. So if you zoom in, 
it's super, super tiny because when we set up tables and the chairs, we use the radius to be 20 inch, which is big. So that's why the text, they are pretty small, but don't worry, let's fix it. So double click on the words and select them all. Then right now, the height is 0.2. Let's change it to be 50, see if it works. Then enter, wow, it's huge. And let's look. Huh, it's actually uh, worked pretty well. Then click on somewhere. We have keynote speaker here. And let's make a box around it. OK, so this is our keynote speaker area. And in construction management or in architecture, we usually have a margin, which means that's the outside of the room. That's the wall. That's the margin of the project. And we don't want people change the margin by accident. So the way we do that is we are going to create a layer and lock that layer. So let's make a new layer here and call it as margin. Then have the lock to be locked. Then double click on the front, make the margin layer to be current, then close it. So as you can see, the lock now is locked. Then let's create a box around the room. Let's see that's our room size, the margin. So as you hover your mouse on top of the line, as you can see, a lock shows up and you won't be able to change it unless you unlock the margin layer. Then you can modify the objects on the layer. So let's still have it locked. Then save your work. Okay, the last option is path array, which you create a path that all your objects will follow. So let's create the object first. Before that, let's switch back to the solid line white layer and I create the part, which is going to be it's in the radius circle and I create a circle somewhere around here with the radius 20. Then let's create a path line. So we could use the spline here, which you create multiple points, then AutoCAD is going to create all the points with a smooth curve. So let's click on it and make a path like this. And after you're done, hit enter. Don't hit ESC. Otherwise, the curve is going to be disappeared. Then hit enter. So now let's go to path array. The object is the circle. And right click of the mouse after you're done. Then select the path curve, which is the curve here. They automatically created all the objects here. And you still have the associated function here. And you could also change the number of atoms or change the distance in between. Since right now it's under measure mode, so you can only change the distance in between. However, if you switch back to the divide mode, then you could specify the number of atoms. So let's see if it's too compact. Let's change it to 18 and enter. So they have more spaces in between. And you could always play around with align atoms. So they look probably uh, better as the way you want. Or switch back to measure. Then you can specify the distance in between. So let's see, we want it to be 90. Then you have less atoms here. And play with align and tangent and base point. Then close the array and save your work. All right, this is all we have for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.